Hello, in this video, we're looking at in behavior limits, uh, describing the symmetry of even and odd functions. We'll start off with in behavior. In behavior is the behavior of the graph of f of x as x goes to positive or negative infinity. All right, so here we have a graph of f of x, and we're interested in a couple of things. We're interested in looking at this graph as x goes to infinity, what is f of x doing? Is it going up to infinity, or is f of x going down to negative infinity? And the, another way to think about this is as the domain increases to the right, what's the range doing? As the domain goes left, what's the range doing? There are a couple ways that we can write the end behavior. So now we'll actually do an example. Here's a graph. Um, the classic way of writing it is like this. As x goes to negative infinity, f of x goes where? So as the x's go left, what's happening in f of x? It's going off to positive infinity. And then as x goes to positive infinity, so as the domain increases, what's the range doing? It's also increasing and going to positive infinity. Now we can also represent this with a limit notation. And uh, limits are a huge part of calculus, so we'll talk about where those uh, come from a little bit more in class. But here's the notation. All right, so here's how uh, limit notation is working, all right? Um, we can read it as the limit as x goes to negative infinity of f of x equals, and what this means is as x goes left, what is the function approaching? So as x keeps getting more and more negative, what's the function doing? It's going off to infinity. And uh, so the limit as x gets more and more positive is also infinity because as x got more positive, so did the range. So it's basically, you know, this, the same answers, um, but this is a more proper notation, especially whenever we get to calculus. For polynomials, you don't even need to see the graph to know the in behavior. And to know the in behavior, all we have to look at is the leading coefficient and the degree of the polynomial. And we're always going to think of the right side first, but here's how it works. If the leading coefficient is positive, see I'm thinking of the right side first, it always likes to end going up. Or if it's negative, it likes to end going down to negative infinity. Now, even functions like to go in the same direction. So this will either be both up or both down. And odd functions go in opposite directions. So down up or up down. Now, depending on the polynomial, you might have like a lot of stuff happening in between, but these are the end tails. All right, so here, let's do an example. Now, if I want to think about the right side of this graph first, I have to first look at the leading coefficient. Okay, so first thing I check, is this 5 the biggest exponent? Yes, it is. So this is what I'm going to be paying attention to. Now, the leading coefficient is this negative 2. So since it's negative, I know that this function wants to end going down. And now I look at the degree of the polynomial. It's a 5, which is odd, so they're going to want to go in opposite directions. So this graph must start uh, going off to positive infinity and end going to negative infinity. So right here is the actual graph of that polynomial, and you can see it's in behavior. On the left side, it was going up, and on the right side, it's going down. So tying it all together, writing this in limit notation, as x goes to negative infinity, f of x went to positive infinity. And on the right side, whenever x went to positive, f of x went to negative infinity. All right, let's talk about finding limits from the left or right. And uh, basically what I'm asking is, what y value is the function approaching from the left or right? The symbols that we use for left and right are just a minus sign and a plus sign. All right, so let's look at this. What's the limit of g of x as x approaches 6 from the right? So here's 6. As x approaches 6 from the right, uh, this y value is going to negative 3. But what about as x approaches 6 from the left? So as this function is approaching 6 from the left, it's actually going off to infinity. So sometimes you'll see people write infinity, but we will say that this limit does not exist. Now, unless these two numbers are the same, and so we have negative 3 and does not exist, unless they're the same, the limit of overall of 6 from the left and right uh, does not exist. However, if they were the same number, then that number would be the limit. 
All right, let's look at this function here. Uh, we can see that this function has a hole, a hole, and then an actual value. So let's find the limits of these. The limit as x approaches 2 from the left. Here's x equals 2. From the left, the function is coming in right here. And the y value that it is approaching, not that it equals, but that it's approaching from the left is 5. From the right, as it gets closer to 2, the y value that we're approaching is 1. So because these numbers do not match up, the limit of 2 does not exist. Now what is f of 2? If we actually evaluated this function f at 2, well this would be a hole, this would be a hole, the actual value at 2 is this 9 because that's the point that's included at 2. All right, finally we have even and odd functions. From a graph, even functions have y-axis symmetry. So they're symmetric about the y-axis. The function um, y equals x squared is a classic example of an um, even function. Now odd functions have origin symmetry. And uh, a classic example of a function with origin symmetry would be x cubed. This function, the parent function, looks like that. And that has origin symmetry. So if you spun it um, 180 degrees about the origin, you'd get the same graph. Now, algebraically, you would follow these steps to tell if a function was even or odd. You'd replace all the x's with negative x's. If everything stays the same, it's an even function. If everything changes, it's odd. If only some of the things change, it's neither. Let's do some examples. All right, so here with y equals x cubed minus x, I'm going to replace all of those x's with negative x's. So negative x cubed actually just comes out to negative x cubed because negative x times negative x times negative x. And then minus negative x changes to plus x. So as we can see here, these were positive negative. Now they're negative positive. Everything changed. This must be an odd function. Now doing the same thing over here, whenever you raise any negative number to an even power, uh, the negative is going to fall away. So this comes back out to 4x to the fourth minus 3. All of the signs are the same, so this must be an even function. Try this one out for yourself. Pause the video and see if it's even odd or neither. You should see that the x to the fifth turns negative, but the negative 4x squared, negative x times negative x is just positive x again, x squared. So these stayed the same. So because not everything changed, this is an odd function. All right. I know that these notes have been long, but thank you and goodbye.